clouds are fascinating to watch. Amazingly, every day, a process comparable to cloud formation occurs in the billions of cells that make up our bodies. The biologist Tony Hyman and his team investigate this process. The miracle of life is something that we enjoy every single day. It's like peeling back the layers of an orange and seeing more and more interesting details as we go further inside. But what does his research have to do with clouds? Or with possible cures for illnesses such as Alzheimer's disease? To find out, we accompany Tony Hyman to his lab at the Max Planck Institute for Molecular Cell Biology and Genetics in Dresden, Germany, which he's headed for over 20 years. His special area of expertise is the inside of cells, specifically the proteins that occur within the intracellular fluid. These so-called condensates, visible here as an aggregation of white dots, form under very specific conditions much like clouds. One way to think about it is when you see clouds forming in the sky. As things like temperature or pressure change, the water molecules suddenly condense to make clouds. And this process of condensation is similar to the torpor process we look at inside the cell. That condensation of proteins takes place inside our cells is a groundbreaking discovery, critical for understanding many biological processes. Hey, Natasha. Here, these processes are put under the microscope. What are we looking at today? We're looking at A model organism is of great help in this endeavour. The nematode C. elegans unwittingly discloses his innermost secrets to the researchers. The threadworm's gonads, responsible for reproduction, are of particular interest to Tony Hyman and his team. Just they don't do this one. All right, that's can't ask for better than that. The formation of what we call germ cells, what you know as sperm and oocytes, is a fascinating process because while our somatic cells, our body cells, age, the germ cells do not. They're immortal. So each generation, the cell has to maintain the immortality of its germ cells. Change the colour and then I check the other antenna. A fluorescence microscope reveals the secret hidden inside the threadworm's gonads. Okay. Can you show me the uh, strange from last week? Here, the importance of protein condensates for the nematode's reproduction comes to light. The greenish clusters are condensates known as pea granules, and these are necessary to form egg cells. Pea granules, if they don't form, um, result in a worm that grows up but has no germ cells. It'd be like you're born, you grow up, but you're sterile. So they play a crucial role in our understanding of how cells go ahead and make germ cells. No protein condensates, no offspring. While beneficial for reproduction, other types of condensates can be very detrimental. They can harm cells and cause diseases like Alzheimer's or a myotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS. In a healthy cell, condensates form from condensation of individual proteins to form liquid-like structures. But in many diseases, such as ALS or Alzheimer's, you find aggregates of proteins. Aggregates are collections of proteins that are not dynamic. They just stay in one place, like a solid. This is how such an aggregate forms. A specific protein named FUS turns from its liquid phase into a solid form. Tony Hyman discovered that this protein transformation may be a decisive factor for the onset of ALS. That these FUS proteins solidify may be the very cause why ALS patients lose the ability to move their muscles. The team can emulate protein hardening, normally caused by disease, artificially in the lab. Another candidate is the protein TAU, which plays a role in Alzheimer's disease. By adding chemical solutions or changing the temperature regime, 
The researchers simulate various conditions inside a cell to find out which variables may be responsible for creating unwanted protein lumps. How's it going, Hero? Oh, good? good. Yeah. yeah. You got some results then? But yes. they can do it the other way around as well, reliquifying solid proteins through chemical agents. A first step on the long path towards developing medication to treat ALS. On the left, FUS condensates with solid deposits. And on the right, the same proteins after treatment. In the long term, I'm extremely optimistic because it's clear that you cannot think of a cell as a dilute solution of proteins that don't work together. That would be like thinking of a village as a set of individual people without working on the psychology of how groups form. So I'm absolutely convinced that by studying the cell using these condensate ideas, in the long term, will revolutionise drug discovery. Tony Hyman has changed how we look at the cells that make up our bodies. And his work promises even more important information on the various proteins that float in the intracellular fluid, where they can potentially form condensates. The functions these proteins have for our lives and in causing disease are not yet completely understood. But how condensates form and what brings proteins to change from a liquid to a solid state, understanding these mechanisms lays the foundation for future medical treatments. My biggest wish is to understand how cells control the behaviour of condensates and that allows us to understand why they go wrong in disease.